Well, good morning and welcome to another teaching. It is a Saturday morning here in Texas and uh, hopefully I'll spend in time with Jesus, growing in your relationship with Jesus, growing to spend time in the scriptures. Hopefully you're growing in your, in your prayer life, growing in your times of praise and worship and thanksgiving throughout each day, growing in times of joyful repentance of just of really looking inside yourself and seeing the things that are out of place and repenting and repenting in joy because you know that it's going to bring you closer to Jesus and it's and it's pleasing to him. So thank you, Lord Jesus. OK. All right. Lord willing, we'll finish Romans chapter five today. Just this chapter has been overwhelming. The book, as we've talked about, is incredible uh, today. Lord willing, we'll do uh, verses 15 to 21. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy, your favor, your goodness, and your grace on our lives. Father, we thank you for the gift of your grace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you for becoming a human man for us. We thank you for living a perfect, righteous life on our behalf and in our place. We thank you for dying a a torturous death on our, on our behalf and in our place. And we thank you that you're alive and risen. Holy Spirit, we do ask you to lead us and guide us now as we open your word. We ask you to give us eyes that see, ears that hear, and hearts that understand. Father, I do want to lift up my mother now and ask for a, just a special mercy on her. We ask you to, to draw close to her, Lord, as she's just in a hospital, Father. And uh, we just ask you to reveal yourself to her in a deep, and meaningful and powerful way. I do indeed pray salvation in my mother and father, that they would come to genuine saving faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, I pray your healing in my mother. Um, I ask you to be with her, Lord. I ask you to have mercy on her. Again, I ask you to reveal yourself to her. I bless you, mom. I thank the Lord for you. I bless you, pop. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, Romans 5, uh, we're going to do 15 to 21. <clears throat> but the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was added so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Wow. I mean, the, again, the whole book of Romans, but when you read this chapter, okay, when, we, when we're going through chapter five, and I've said this throughout the book, but you really see this, this balance you see this, you know, this incredible reason, this incredible logic. You see this symmetry. You see this, this perfection. You really don't, you see that God wasn't just haphazard doing things in just some way because he, he's God. So we just felt like doing it like this. You see a real propriety in it. You see a, you see behind it. You see reasoning and how our heavenly father, how Jesus Christ, our Lord, how our triune God did what they did 
in in sinful humanity and what they did in redemption. You just you see just this incredible, incredible, as I said, just reason. And, and really, it ought to drive us to to a deeper, more refined faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I mean, thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, so so again, we'll start in verse 15. But the gift is not like the trespass. So remember, Paul ended verse 14 saying that Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come, okay? Uh, and that he was a pattern and Jesus was a pattern, okay? So the, the, there, are, there are two men. Every human being, every, every person who's part of humanity is either in Adam, which means you're in sin and death, or you're in Christ, Okay, which means you're you're in grace and life in eternal life. Okay, um, so Adam was a pattern, meaning Adam's choices had complete consequences on the entire human race. When Adam sinned, right, Corinne, it it brought it brought uh, sin into the entire human race. Every bit of his posterity was sinful after that. Okay. Um, the first man brought sin into the world, and then every person who was ever born, save Jesus, that's why he was born of a virgin, was born with a sinful nature. And because every person was born with a sinful nature, every person is born naturally alive, but spiritually dead. Their spirit is dead to God because they have a sinful nature. And we see that nature in children, we see it in them at the earliest ages, right? I always, I've always i told the story many times about my two daughters, Kristen and Lauren, at one year old, how I could buy them both the exact same toy, and, you know, how my daughter Lauren would want both of those toys and Kristen to have none, even though it's the same toy. And, and then when I would take it from her, or their mother would take it from her and, you know, do right to say, no, that's your sister's. She'd get mad because she didn't have both, right? And then you could see the same sinful nature in, in her uh, in her sister, Kristen. We see it in all children, right? We just see this nature to selfishness, right? Uh, people will say, well, that's just human nature. It, it certainly is human nature. The Bible rightly calls it a sinful nature. So again, in Adam, okay, Adam brought sin into this world, when he sinned, he passed that sin into his children and then their children. Every human being, okay, is born with a nature that wants its own way. I still see it in my life. Even when we've given our lives to Jesus, even when we've received Jesus Christ as our, as our Lord and Savior, our sinful nature, the power has been taken from it, but it's certainly not eradicated. We can still see, I certainly see in myself, Hence why I talk about the need of repentance. Again, we know it has nothing to do with our salvation, but I still see a, a, a selfishness in myself. I still see a preference. I still consistently see that I want my own way, okay? And when I don't get it, I can act in a sinful and oftentimes childish, immature, and baby-like way, okay? Um, and forgive us, Father. Forgive me in the name of Jesus. So, um, so Adam, Adam's sin had consequences for the whole human race, right, Pop? Um, and now Jesus, Adam was a pattern. Now Jesus also, okay, what he did has consequences for the whole human race. But now in verse 15, Paul says, but the gift is not like the trespass. Although they're both a pattern, they both had consequences what they did, their choices had consequences for all humanity. They're not the same. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man. So again, when Adam sinned, it thrust all humanity uh, into natural death and spiritual death. If Adam didn't sin, then, then natural death wouldn't have occurred, nor spiritual death. Okay? Okay. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, okay, so through Adam, every human being comes into natural death and spiritual death. We all sin, we all die naturally, we enter this world spiritually dead, and we need to receive new life, spiritual life, eternal life in Jesus Christ. 
but the gift is not like the trespass. Although both what Adam did and Jesus did have consequences for all humanity, they're not the same. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Okay, so, so Adam's, Adam's choices brought sin to the whole world, but what Jesus did brought eternal life, this gift that we have in Jesus. You notice it's called a gift. We cannot earn it, right, Rap? It's a gift. How much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Verse 16, again, the gift of God is not like the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. Okay, when Adam sinned, uh, immediately he died spiritually. He would ultimately die as sin would ultimately destroy his body as it does all of ours. The reason every single one of us dies is because of sin. Dies naturally, I mean. We, are, we already come into this world spiritually dead, okay? Um, and as I said, we need new life, spiritual life, eternal life that we receive when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Wow, are you seeing it, May? Do you just see it, Stephen? Golly! Again, the gift of God is not like the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation for everyone. Everyone was condemned in sin. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. So Adam's one sin brought condemnation. And from there on, countless, countless trillions, quadrillions, zillions, uncountable sins followed what Adam did. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. So again, Although they're both similar in the fact that Adam's choices affected all of humanity, what Jesus did affected all of humanity, they're not the same. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification, okay? The Adam's choices brought death, natural and spiritual death. Jesus' choices brought life, eternal life. Wow. The gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. And you recall, justification means to be declared not guilty of sin, innocent and righteous by God. It's incredible. That's what Jesus's gift brought for those who would receive it. Verse 17, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So again, all right, if we're real, we can just see this is deep now, right? I mean, it's serious here. You see it, Becky? I mean, we're bam, 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 right, Susan? I mean, the depth of it, I mean, you really have to pay attention. This is why we do Bible study, y'all. This is why it's worth spending time, David, right? Really digging into the scriptures, digging into them, right, Benny? Digging in, Ian, right? So again, let's unpack this verse. For if by the trespass of the one man, Adam's sin, when Adam sinned and he, he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God commanded him not to eat, that's what he's talking about. For if by the trespass of the one man, Adam's disobedience, Death reigned through that one man. Death reigned, okay? It ruled. Death still reigns today, right? Every human being dies. As we said, even when a baby is born, we rejoice. It's, it's, it, the, the child is beautiful, but it will certainly die. There is no question of it. Death still reigns in the human race. That's why we want Jesus to come back. Come, Lord Jesus. We want him to come today. Come, Lord Jesus. Because when, when ultimately when Jesus comes, we have a new heaven and a new earth. There will be no more death reigning. There will be no more physical death. Now, spiritual death, that's already handled for those who have received Jesus Christ. Look what it says. For if by the trespass, trespass of the one man, uh, and trespass means to break a command. It certainly means to sin. 
Um, I mean, it means to step over a line to do wrong. God told you what to do. There's the line. You stepped over it. You trespassed the line, right? When you trespass onto someone else's property, you, you've gone from your property and you've trespassed, you've crossed the line over their property, okay? For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned, ruled through that one man, Adam, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace? So again, for those who receive, okay? Um, we have to receive what our Father has done for us in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 1, 12, right? Stephen says, yet to all who received him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness, okay? So when we receive the grace of God, grace is God's unmerited favor. It's a gift to us, okay? When we receive the gift, and the gift is salvation by God's grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. The gift is trusting and relying in what Jesus did on the cross for us, on our behalf, and in our place, okay? That's the gift. It's a free gift, a free offer of salvation. Provision has been made for us in Christ, and we simply need to receive it, okay? We can reject the gift. We need to simply receive the gift. We need to acknowledge and humble ourselves and simply confess that we are sinful human beings. We are hopeless, helpless, desperate sinners. And without Jesus, only eternal hell awaits. And from that position, we receive Christ. We, we acknowledge our need of him and we run to him and cling to him, believing that indeed we will receive eternal life. We will receive the forgiveness of our sins. We will be justified. We will be made righteous in Jesus Christ our Lord and we will indeed go to heaven. Wow. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So again, remember when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, all of our sin, past, present, and future sin, is credited to Jesus at the cross and the perfect righteous life that Jesus lived. The very righteousness of Jesus Christ is credited to us as if we lived that perfect life of righteousness. Indeed, we are declared by God as we are righteous that we did indeed do it. It was accounted to us as if we did do it. it. It's incredible. That exchange, right? Our sin for the perfect righteous life of Jesus Christ. That's the heart of the Christian gospel. Wow. Whew. Um, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gifts of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? So again, in Adam, death reigns. Physical death and spiritual death but we reign in life through Jesus Christ. We actually have eternal life and no more does death reign. Natural death will still reign until Jesus comes, okay? But spiritual death, eternal death will no longer reign. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man Jesus Christ. So again, we reign in life in and through Jesus Christ and death doesn't rule us anymore. No more will we have eternal death. We have eternal life. We reign and rule in life in Jesus Christ. Verse 18. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, Adam sinned. It brought condemnation, spiritual death, as well as natural death, into the entire human race. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, and that certainly means all people there, all humanity, all mankind, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. You see, it's pretty incredible, right? You see, it's got just the balance there, okay? Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, what Adam did. So also the result of one act of righteousness, right? Jesus's perfect sacrifice on the cross was justification that brings life for all men. Verse 19, 
for justice through the di- for justice through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. Adam, okay, for justice through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. Again, when Adam sinned, he polluted the entire human race, all of humanity. For justice through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. So also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Do you see it? So yes, all of us came into this world with a sinful nature we didn't ask for. And because we have that sinful nature, we do indeed sin. And we show when we sin that we are indeed in Adam. But because of that, because we were indeed made sinful by the one man, God has made provision by the one God man in Jesus Christ that we can escape it. We were born with a sinful nature we didn't ask for. And because we have that nature, we do indeed sin. And because of that, because we didn't ask for it, because we inherited that, okay, uh, we are offered a gift of salvation that also costs us nothing. We cannot earn it through what Jesus Christ has done, okay? Um, We became sinners, and and again, we're responsible for it, but in a certain way, because of what Adam did, we came into this world and are sinful, and make no mistake, you know, Adam is our, our type, right? We would have done what Adam did at his situation. And that's why it's right for the Lord to account us as sinners. But because we came into this through Adam, provision is made and there's nothing we can do to earn it. All we do is receive the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord, right? So again, are you seeing when we go through this, Kristen, right? Verse by verse by verse, right, Lauren? When you slowly go through it, you see this incredible balance. You see this reason. You see this logic. It's, uh, you can almost look and see why this book of Romans is, is called the greatest piece of literature ever penned in human history. Wow. For justice through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. All humanity is a sinner. And that is what happened when Adam sinned. So also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The obedience of the one man, Jesus Christ, right? The perfect, righteous, obedient life that Jesus lived. Again, when you receive Christ, you're made right with God. The many, verse 9, will be made righteous. All who receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are made right with God, not based on anything they've done, but based on what Jesus has done. By trusting in Jesus and his perfect obedience, that righteous, perfect obedience is credited to you and credited to me as if we lived it in our lives. And all of our sin, past, present, and future, is credited to Christ at the cross. And it's paid for Jesus at the cross. The wrath of our heavenly father against sin is satisfied in the work that Jesus did on the cross. And our personal sin is appropriated to Christ in receiving him and trusting him to take our sin and to forgive our sin and to give us life, spiritual life, eternal life. I mean, just saying it is so humbling, Father. It's so it's so overwhelming. It's uh, it's so unthinkable. It's so incredible, Lord. It's um, we just worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Golly, verse twenty. The law was added so that the trespass might increase. This is interesting. Now look what he says. The law was added so that the trespass might increase. Okay, he's talking about the Mosaic law now. So, you know, someone might think, okay, then why even go through this whole thing of the Ten Commandments? Why go through this law, right, if it has nothing to do with our salvation? Never does our salvation, never does the forgiveness of our sins, the salvation of our soul, having relationship with each member of the triune God and going to heaven, receiving eternal life, never does that have anything to do with our works, Never does it have anything with us doing good and not doing bad, okay? So one would ask the question, verse 20, 
The law was added so that the trespass might increase. Wow. Okay. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So look at this now. The law was added so that the trespass might increase. This is chapter 5, verse 20. So before, you know, before the law was given, you know, we didn't know what we were doing wrong. But now once the law was given, once the commandments are given and we choose to break them, okay, um, uh, you know, now we know what we do. And here's the deep, dark thing. The sin that lives in us, once we know there's a wrong, there's something in us that almost drives us to it that, 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 that makes us want to do it more. It's crazy, right? Like if you're talking to somebody and someone's disrespectful to you and someone just, you know, just condescends to you and orders you around, there's just, there's something that just wants to rebel. There's something that wants to return that anger, even though the Bible says don't do it. Even though Bible says don't return anger for anger, insult for insult, right? First Peter three, but with blessing that you might inherit a blessing. That's hard. Right? Boy, you disrespect me. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not doing what you say. I mean, it's just there's just something in that law, right? There's something when you go by that speed limit sign that says 70. There's that little thing in there that I like going 80 because I can. They ain't telling me how fast to go. This is my car. <laughs> oh, man. Golly. I'm just laughing like Medea says, you know, I was watching this movie. <laughs> I'm not, she just makes me laugh. The Tyler Perry movies make me laugh. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, the judge, makes it, the judge said, I'm suspending your license. And Medea says, <laughs> spend my license. I mean, my spend license been suspended 30 years. I still got keys. <laughs> so just, <laughs> it's uh, right, you know. And Medea's showing us, you know, she ain't worried about no law. You know, you know matter of fact, you know, she, she, as we do, as we're all sinners, Right. There's just something in us that when we know there's a loss, we get worse. It's like we want to break it. The law was added so that the trespass might increase. It's not that there's anything wrong with the law. It's what's in us. We are broken. Right. The law was added so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Now, this is just an incredible statement, y'all. But where sin increased. Grace increased all the more, May. Wow. You see that, Peyton? Chloe, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. We would think where sin increased, God's anger increased all the more. You would think where sin increased, God's wrath increased all the more. And that and wrath is real. But the love of our Heavenly Father is so overwhelming that where but where sin increased. Grace increased all the more. So there's so much more power in grace. And remember, grace is God's unmerited favor. It's his love toward us, his gift to us that we do not deserve. We cannot earn. Wow. But where sin increased, you would think anger and punishment increased all the more. But no, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. That should give every one of us comfort, y'all. You cannot out sin God's grace. Now, of course, the next chapter, Paul's going to deal with the fact that everybody's like, let's just go out and sin it up now, right? Let's just go do all the bad we can since grace increased all the more. And he's going to handle that starting in chapter six. Pow, Nathan. Wow. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. We cannot, we cannot out sin the grace of God. Verse 21 so that just as sin reigned in death, and we already talked about that, uh, sin reigns, it rules in death. So just so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace, God's unmerited favor, not our works, not our efforts, not anything we do. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign. Grace is God's unmerited favor. It, it has nothing to do with what we did. It's what Christ did so that grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's only in and through Jesus that we have eternal life, spiritual life. And remember, Eternal life is not just everlasting life. Eternal life is a quality of life that we have right now, that we enjoy now, and we grow in now through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for these incredible truths. We just thank you. We praise you. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We love you. We thank you and worship you, Holy Spirit, as we ask you to seal this message to our hearts now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.